Yo, what's poppin' guys? In this video, I will be teaching you how to make an automatic maze generator. Let's go! So, the first thing we're going to want to do is obviously set up what generates the maze. But, what I'm going to do is make a bounds sprite for, like, walls on the side. So let's make a sprite and just call it bounds. I have caps lock on. For bounds, we'll just make a general square around the perimeter. There we go. No code needs to be done here. Let's make a sprite and call it maze. So, your maze sprite needs to have a few things. Convert your costume to bitmap and move way into the center. Grab your sprite option and choose whatever color you want. I'll use red. Well, actually, I'll use blue. I'll use blue. You will see these four tiles here. These are the tiles that you want to fill in. Just like that. We'll call this costume tile. Next, we'll duplicate what we have and we need to fill up some more space. So this needs to be five by two tiles long. So one, two, three, four, five by two. And we need to fill this in right here. Just like that. Call this tile two. Finally, we need a, another sprite called, or another costume called a detector. Detector needs to be the same size as tile, just needs to be moved. So really what you can do is you can duplicate tile, and I'll set this costume to red for our, oh, set this to red, or tile three, for our detector sprite, or detector costume, and we need to move this down for another square. So from the center, we need to go over two. So right here, and then we need to fill in these spots. And fill it in. There we go. There is our detector. And we will call it, and we will name it as such, detector. Cool. And now we can just make a final costume for whatever you want the end of your map to be. Maybe you want it to be like an X. Like that. Again, keep it in these two pixels just so that it matches with the rest of your work. Cool. We can call this just X. Great, now that you have these four costumes all set and ready, we can move on to the next step. Which is coding. So, inside of our code, we will start by dragging out a when green flag is clicked. We will immediately broadcast a broadcast called Reset Maze for whenever the maze needs to be reset, which it will reset right from the beginning. So, reset maze. If you don't have your pen on, you can come to your extensions and click pen. Underneath reset maze, drag out and erase all. We will now make a variable. I will just rename the one that I have already, and we will name it tile size. We will set tile size to 30. You can feel free to mess around with these inputs later, but for now, just go with what I'm doing. You can feel free to copy these and change them later. Go to your looks tab and drag out a set size. Not change, make sure it's set. Inside of this set size, drag an multiplication equation out. And in the first bubble, put a division equation. In the first bubble, put 100. The second bubble, put 12. 
and in the third bubble put tile size. Then we will have the entire maze sprite go to zero zero. Then we will have it point in direction and we will have it pick a random direction, but first set in a multiplication symbol. And put a pick random in the second bubble. Put 90 in the first bubble for 90 degrees. Put negative one in the first pick random bubble and two in the second pick random bubble, meaning it could be point in direction, either 90, negative 90, because times negative one is negative 90, 90 times 2, 180. It'll pick a random direction from there. Now we need to make a new variable and call this furthest distance. Set furthest distance to 0 and make another variable just called distance and set distance to 0. Next we will need to create a block. So come down to my blocks and type in and call this block draw maze. Click OK and drag draw maze underneath. Before we do anything else, we will switch the costume to X and then make a broadcast called maze generated. Great. Now let's decide what draw maze does. So. Underneath draw maze, we will need to first switch costume to tile 2. Then we will stamp. Next, we need to move, go to variables, and grab tile size steps. Then we need to change distance by 1. We will make a block and call it record distance and put record distance underneath. Let's take a break to decide what record distance is going to do. Record distance will run an if statement that says if, grab a greater than symbol, put it inside, if distance is greater than further distance, then we need to set further distance to distance. Because if your distance is ever farther than the furthest distance that exists, you need to obviously set the furthest distance to distance to keep the furthest distance consistent. Make a variable, call it furthest x, and another variable called furthest y. We will then set furthest x to x position, and then in furthest y, put y position. Make a new block called try directions from and we'll make an input and call it start direction and click OK. Try directions from go to motions and put direction in the bubble. Let's take a moment to decide what try directions from does. In try directions from, we will need to run an if statement, where we will now run a pick random to decide where we're gonna go. So, put an equal sign and put pick random one to two. If it equals one, then we will turn right. Well, the turn direction doesn't really matter because we're randomizing it again. Grab a multiplication, put a 90 in the first bubble. This might look a little bit familiar. Put a pick random, negative one to one. We will switch our costume to detector and then repeat four times. If, go to operators and put a not in here put an OR inside of the knot and choose touching bounds or touching color and then grab the color of your tiles. In my case is this blue. So 61.4 100 100 100. So 
So I'll just set it to 6100. 100. Great. And inside of there, you will draw a maze. And then you will turn right 90 degrees. Following up with pointing in direction and grab the start direction bubble and put it inside. There you go. That's what try directions does. Now, continuing underneath draw maze, we will move. Go to operators and grab a minus and put it inside. Put zero in the first bubble and put tile size in the second bubble. Grab a change variable and put it underneath and we'll change distance by negative one. Great. Now we need to make ourselves a player. Make a new sprite and we'll call it player. Decide a player color that is different from your tile color. So don't put blue. Right? Let's say I want my character to be green. Green character. Make sure that your Make sure your players in these two by two squares. Since the size of your tiles are two by two, you don't want your player bigger than your tile is. Then you will name this circle or player. I'll keep it circle. Because you have two states of your player. You have a circle state or whatever you want this to be as long as it's in between these two by two squares. Make another costume and make a small square. Make a small square, very small, about the size of a normal tile. Put it in the center and we'll call it square. Great. So let's decide what our player does. So on the green flag, our player will hide. Then, the reason we have a maze generated broadcast is for when we spawn the player. We don't want to spawn the player if the maze hasn't been generated yet. So, when I receive maze generated, we will set size to go to sensing, drag out this backdrop of switch stage to maze and this first one to size size of maze set size to size of maze then we will go to furthest x and furthest y then we will wait until not key and set this to any so the player can't be touching any buttons in case they're touching a button you don't want them to so you'll wait until they're not touching any buttons and then you can show the player in control grab a repeat until and choose if repeat until touching maze make a new block called move with speed at an input and type in speed Press OK. Put the move with speed block inside. And inside we will grab a division symbol. And choose tile size in the first bubble and eight in the second bubble. Now to say what move with speed means. So we will repeat. Grab a repeat loop and inside Go to operators and grab the abs of block. Change abs to ceiling and then put speed in the bubble. We will make a new block and call it move. Add an input and type DX and another input and type in DY, direction X, direction Y. Tick run without screen refresh and click OK. That reminds me, we haven't been ticking without screen refreshes. In move with speed, tick run without screen refresh. Inside of our maze sprite, right click draw maze and click edit and tick run without screen refresh. And let's get back to our player. Inside of our player, 
we will put a move inside inside of our DX spot. We will grab a minus symbol, put it inside. Go to your sensing and grab key. Go to your sensing, set your first one to either right arrow, W, whatever you want to go right. And then in your other side, put left arrow or again, whatever number you want or key you want and put zero in the bubble. We'll put another move, duplicate what we have, Oop, put another move, duplicate what we made for the first one, put it in the second bubble and put a zero in the first. So inside of your move with speed on the bottom half, put right arrow to up or whatever you want to be up and your left arrow to down or whatever you want to be down. Now to decide what move DX and DY means. So once we get move DX DY, we will switch the costume to square. We will then change our X by DX and change our Y by DY. Now, this is where you'll set your backdrop. I'm going to set my backdrop color to black, but just make sure you choose a backdrop color. Inside of our player, we will then put underneath an if statement and check if touching color and then the color of your backdrop, which in my case was black. Touching color black, you will change X by go to operators and pull out a minus symbol, put a zero in the first bubble and DX in the second. Then we will change Y by zero minus DY. And then we will switch our costume back to circle. Great. Now back underneath maze generated, we will need to hide. And then after we solve the maze, we will just have it reset the maze. All right, let's test it out. When you click the green flag, you see it generates a maze for us and it puts our player in it and we can use our keys to move the player around and get ourselves to the X or whatever you made your final. Did it just generate an impossible maze? No, it didn't. <laughs> I thought it generated an impossible maze. It did not. It did not. I'm just bad at solving mazes. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Yes, it, it will not be able to generate a maze that is impossible but it will generate mazes until the end of time. Now, if you want a cool idea for something to do with this, using this method, in theory, you should be able to create a ray caster that randomly makes randomly, th you should be able to create a ray caster that generates random 3D mazes for you to go through until the end of time. But other than that, this is a lot of fun just to mess around with if you're bored, you have an infinite maze creator now. Just have a lot of fun with. But yeah, that's where I'm going to end the video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, then like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyways, because I expect to see something cool done with this mechanic. Maybe you have some fun survival game where you put enemies inside of here and you have a gun power-up spawn and you can go get power-ups to get weapons to kill the enemies to make your way through the maze but yeah thank you all so much for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i will see you all in the next one peace